Hi, my name is Amy Apoliti, and I'm here with a group of awesome yoga teachers. And we're having a conversation about sequencing, which is a big topic for yoga teachers. And it's a difficult topic because so many different styles and different teacher trainers have different philosophies about sequencing. And so what I say might be different than somebody else. But I'll go with what I do, and, and if it's helpful for you, I hope, I hope that that helps. So who has a question about sequencing? I have a question. Yeah. I've heard that when sequencing around a back bend, that there are certain specific poses that should come after, and there's a little discrepancy in what I've heard and um, the specifics of what postures should come after back bends. Um, I've heard twists or forward folds. Um, but what is, what is, can you give us some clarity on that? Definitely, yeah. So for me, when I get out of a back bend, and I don't know if this is the same for you guys, but when I get out of a back bend, I kind of just want to lay there like a slug and let my body come back into its natural rhythm. I'm not so inclined to immediately go into a forward fold and hug my legs into my chest. Less inclined to do that. I'm less inclined to shock the spine into a twist, but to simply lay there and let my breath go back to normal and, and to let my body sort of get back into a neutral position. The other thing is that eventually, after that period, I do want to get the femur bones, these thigh bones, to root into the sockets. So what are some poses that actually root the femurs back and, and put them in the back of the sockets? What do you guys think? Supta Baddha Konasana could be, if it's done properly, what else? Downward facing dog is great. And the other thing that's awesome about downward dog is that it's symmetrical. So it's, you, you lay there for a minute, you go into down dog, and the femurs just move right into the back plane. Why would you want the femurs to move into the back plane? Well, in back bends, which way do the femurs go? <laughs> Forward, they, you know, you're kind of doing this, so you want them to root back. So down dog is really great because it's neutral, it's not asymmetrical, and the femurs go back. Then after a down dog, I might do something that really gets the femurs back, but is asymmetrical. And so I might do something like Parsvottanasana, which is this pose, you know, this one. And as you square the hips, the femurs root back, and that's really helpful in back bends. Child's pose can be really good, again, if it's done properly. So if the, the toes are touching and the knees are wide and they can really get the groins to soften back, that will root the femurs as well. And then after you've done a few of those poses that root the femur, I love to add the twist at that point to juice the spine up. So you could do a supine twist. Um, you could be sitting up and doing a twist like Ardha Matsyandrasana something like that. Maybe start with something a little bit more like a supine twist or, um, or even an easy twist in this position, sukhasana, like that. So that's when I would get the twists in. And then from there, you can cool down the class, starting to do meditation, uh, maybe some, some gentle hip openers, and then finally, shavasana. And of course, have some space after the, the the final back bend to cool the energy down. You don't want to end on back bends either and then go right into Shavasana. It's pretty, you're kind of buzzing when that happens. So that's a great question. Thanks so much.